Welcome back to the world's worst fishing everybody. I'm Chris Jones and today we're gonna do an episode uh, on how to use a vacuum chamber to degas your plastisol when making soft plastic lures. Um, I've probably had more questions and emails uh, and comments uh, about this um, pretty, almost than anything else. Um, and this is kind of one of those things that you really don't expect to encounter. Uh, you really don't expect that you might ever need a vacuum chamber, right? Whenever you're getting started with plastics, um, it's kind of not um, your first thought. Um, I didn't discover it till a year into making baits, you know, six years ago or whenever that was. And um, it's a really great tool to have should your Plastisol uh, get moisture or any other problems with it. Um, even the most high quality Plastisols um, can, can get really messed up with moisture and over stirring if you agitate it uh, really, really violently. Um, you can still have problems, even with the best Plastisol. If you take care of your Plastisol, generally you don't need one of these, but a lot of people do. I know I do. And uh, I'm going to show you the proper way to use one of these and everything that you need to know when de-airing your Plastisol. All right, so to begin, we're going to talk a little bit about what a vacuum chamber is. It is just a pot. Um, it's basically just an aluminum pot with a, um, I guess this is a plexiglass or a acrylic lid. It basically has a rubber lining on the inside so that it forms a good seal. And uh, it has a gauge which um, measures in inches of mercury and it actually goes down. So that's zero and then that's negative 30. Um, so depending on your altitude, um, you can get it all the way to negative 30. Sometimes it won't quite get there. Uh, this is an open and close valve. And then this is just an air hose which connects to, I have a single stage uh, vacuum pump. And uh, that's pretty much all you need. And this literally sucks air out of here and by default also removes the air in your plastic. So when you set your cup of Plastisol in one of these, I like to go ahead and degas it cold. So if I measure out my formula, I'll go ahead and put my color in, whatever, heat stabilizer if you, if you need it. Um, and then I'll degas it cold. And what it'll do is it'll actually look like you're getting more air bubbles. The air bubbles are going to rise and eventually they're gonna reach a state of equilibrium and then they're gonna pop. It, it literally looks like the bubbles are popping and then it actually will go back down. So one thing you need to keep in mind is to not fill up your cup too much in case your bubbles bubble over. Okay, so I'm going to, um, we're, we're actually making orders tonight while I'm filming. <laughs> so I have to make a color called Wildberry, um, which is a really cool color, I think. And um, so just, just for a quick, um, little custom creation. Well, it's not, I guess it's a custom color because I came up with it a couple years ago. Um, this is just straight purple. And then it has 0 0.015 small green. And then the medium blue flake. And, uh, and I think it's absolutely stunning. Um, it, it looks really good in a trick worm. And, um, and I, I think it's just a very aesthetically pleasing color. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stir this up. All right, that's looking about right. And then we're gonna go ahead and take it to the vacuum chamber. So, here we go. I'm gonna try to get my camera angles um, decent here, so bear with me. And I recommend getting a three gallon size or larger. That way you can fit two of the smaller Pyrex cups and you can fit the larger size that I have over there. Okay, so we're basically, um, Gonna, gonna put the lid on, obviously. You'll probably have some sort of a burp valve, and that is how you let air back into the chamber after you're done. Or, if it looks like your cup is about to overflow, you can open this and it will let air back in, and then the bubbles will recede and you don't overflow your cup. But in order to get started, I have to close that. I have to uh, put this on the on position and then turn on the motor. And you'll see, there goes our gauge. It's going up, 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 up. Well, actually it's going down. Um, 
negative inches of mercury. And once you get to negative 30, there's pretty much no air in here. You've gotten everything out that you're going to get out. Um, well, sorry about the camera, guys. And um, you know what? Let me try to clean that off so you can see a little better. And of course, we have some nice German beer. This is Hofbra Oktoberfest beer. Uh, this is one of the six permitted beers at the actual Munich Oktoberfest games. It's very legit. Here we go. Just fantastic. All right, so let's take a look at this plastic. You'll notice um, that it's starting to, <clears throat> well, I hope you can notice that it's starting to bubble up. And let's see, we're just gonna leave the camera on it here for a couple, couple more seconds. And uh, I hope that's coming through, but it is bubbly as can be, and that's because it's drawing the bubbles out. And there we go, it's starting to fizz a little bit. The bubbles are starting to pop more. Yeah, you can see those bubbles are popping really good. And then it will kind of stop popping, right? Um, and then you'll see that we're, we're down here at negative 30, so that's looking really good. And um, one tip to get air out is to just kind of give your chamber a little bit of kind of a rotating motion and you'll see that bubbled it back up. That's just kind of agitating the plastic to kind of get those bubbles to work themselves up. Um, that's a really good tip to use, um, if, especially when degassing hot, when the bubbles are rising a lot. Shake it real fast and it'll help break some of those bubbles and then your plastic will go back down and that's just a good tip to not overflow your cup. I'm going to demonstrate that here in a little bit and um, and kind of show you more of that. But as you can see, that's pretty much done, guys. It's it's bubbling, it's it's not bubbling very much anymore. We've been down to 30 for a few minutes and we're good to go. We're gonna go ahead and pop this out and we're gonna do that. You turn off the pump, you, you put this in the off position and then I'm gonna loosen the burp valve. Listen to that. That is air going back in. You'll see the needle move. And now we're completely back to neutral and we can remove the lid. And there is perfectly degassed plastic. I can heat that up and I'm not going to have air bubble problems from there on. Okay, so I've got some remelt here and you can see that it is pretty bubbly. Um, that should be like a dark green shade. Instead, it's absolutely riddled with bubbles. Um, that's actually not too bad, however. Um, it could be worse. So I'm going to degas hot plastic. And uh, it's the same thing. You just want to get all that ready. All right. So we're going to close the burp valve. Make sure your um, uh, make, make, make sure your hose is in the on position. And we're going to see what happens here. And um, hot plastic reacts a little quicker than cold. All right, we can see it bubbling. See how it rises, folks? I mean, that is that is already almost at the top of the cup. All right, so I don't want it to overflow, so I'm gonna give it a few shakes. Yeah, there we go. Those bubbles are starting to pop really good. And I mean, it basically just looks like boiling liquid magma. Um, and that right there is rocking and rolling, guys. You've got to have your plastic hot enough to, to degas it thoroughly. If it's already below 320 and it's getting tacky and set up, it's too thick then for the air to really be drawn out of it. So you wanna make sure you're popping this stuff in at like 340 or higher uh, without, without scorching the plastic. And, um, and that's pretty much what it does right there, guys. You, you can kind of shake it around a little bit to help it out. And um, that's, doing, that's doing a really good job. You can see we're already down to negative 30. And when it's just boiling like that, you're pretty much done, um, especially now that we're down to negative 30. So as long as your plastic is hot enough, um, you really don't have to, to wait as long. And then we're gonna open this up. That's letting air back in. And it's gonna, it's gonna blow off some steam. Yeah, there we go. And look at how much different that looks. I don't see any bubbles in that, do you? I'm trying to trying to find the best light here, but um, you you get the drift. That is absolutely clean bubbleless plastic, and that is how you properly 
use a vacuum chamber. Um, I've, I've seen, um, I've, well, I, I haven't seen, but I've gotten emails and um, <clears throat> e emails and comments uh, from people saying, hey, you know, uh, it, it's overflowing the cup or when I turn it on, it, it looks like it actually bubbles more and they're not sure if it's working. No, it's definitely working. Um, just a big thing to remember is to not overflow the cup. Okay, so even though I degassed this plastic at the first, um, I, I degassed it cold already. I stirred a bunch of bubbles in it um, just so that we could do this again. <laughs> just so that we had to degas it again. Just so you can see the effects of the uh, chamber. So let me try to get the camera going here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn her on. And uh, this, this plastic is a little bit colder, guys. Um, so we may have to do a little shaking but uh, you can see it expanding. Ooh, it's expanding quick. You see that? All right, so I want to put a stop to that, all right? And sometimes you don't, sometimes you lose. So if it's starting to overflow, you can do that right there. You can, you can burp it. And I like to burp it all the way. I like to let it just about go back to zero and then we'll start again. And every once in a while, um, I wanted to make sure I got this on camera. You have it when it's gonna be stubborn. It's not going to want to degas, and sometimes you you don't get it. You have to take it back out and reheat it. Um, so it's starting to clear up again, and now it's starting to rise. So there we go. See how it's starting to pop? So I'm going to shake it some more. All right, we're starting to get some bubbles popping there. There we go. That's looking a little better. I think we've got it. We're gonna we're gonna keep trying to shake some of those bubbles loose so so that it doesn't overflow. All right, and that's about that's about as close as you can call it there. In fact, we're gonna burp it slightly just to kind of knock it back down, knock it back down a little bit. And now and now that I had it bubbling like that, um, I can actually take it out. And, um, and, and I wanna burp it slowly because it's right below the burp valve. It'll actually like blow plastic all over your uh, container, uh, over, all over your pot, excuse me. All right, so we're gonna take this out. And, um, and you can see, even though it's a little messy, it overflowed a little bit, that is clean plastic. So now I can inject that. All right, so real quick, we're gonna finish up this wild berry color. Like I said, it's just straight Lure Works purple. We're gonna add some medium blue to it. About two scoops should do it. And that's the 0 .035. Um, that's what I refer to as medium. And I think most people would, would agree the 0 .035 and then there's actually 0 .40, uh, excuse me, 0 .040. So you got 35 and 40. Those are pretty much your mediums. And then this is the small green. It's the 0 .015. And uh, you know, it, it's just a really pretty color and um, I've actually caught quite a few fish on it. So we're just gonna go ahead and stir it in there. All right, getting it, getting it nice and stirred in. Yeah, there we go. And then, uh, and then we're gonna make a few trick worms real quick just cause I don't want a plastics video to not actually involve making plastics. So here we go, we're just gonna Try and get two trick worm molds out of this without getting too much air in it, right? So we're gonna inject nice and slow to try to push any air out that we may have um, sucked up in our injector. Anytime your cup gets low, you, you run the risk of, um, of drawing air up with your plastic. That's just part of the deal, unfortunately. All right, so we have that. Hold a little bit of pressure. And we're gonna to top both of them off. And I think we're good to go. So we're gonna let those uh, cool for just a minute. And, uh, and then we're gonna show you the finished result. All right, little wipe out here. There we go. That is the wild, ooh yeah, that's pretty. That is wild berry. It's a fun, easy little color to make. I think it has a lot of pretty qualities to it. I hope that purple is coming out. 
the the blue to me really brings it out it darkens up the purple a little bit and um i think it's just a pretty color it's a really simple color it's just three chords in the truth guys it's just purple green blue purple color green glitter blue glitter that's it just three steps and uh and it's really 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 gorgeous in a trick worm i have really haven't even experimented with it in in too many other baits uh sadly i just i kind of made this one day in a trick worm and just kind of fell in love with it and stopped there but um i hope this video has been helpful uh with regard to the um vacuum chamber it is a lifesaver if your plastisol takes a turn for the worse well everybody thanks for tuning in to uh to this episode um i hope it's been helpful uh, i certainly know that the uh, vacuum chamber is a really great tool for me um i'm not the best at uh keeping my plastisol issue free um, i know that i tend to over stir um, when i'm trying to prevent hard packing and um, it's really humid here in florida uh, we we've, we've had a lot of rain lately which you know humidity and moisture gets in your garage and if your plastic isn't like perfectly sealed um, it's moisture is going to get into that stuff it's going to absorb it it's going to cause problems um, some guys are probably really good about that and they don't need a vacuum chamber um, other guys like me, I'm not, uh, I, I guess I don't take the precautions that I should. Uh, I need to take my own advice here. Um, but this is a really good investment, I think. Um, even even if you're using really good plastisol, um, you know, I mean, if you're using top of the line stuff like dead on plastics, um, you can still mess it up by over agitating it and allowing moisture um, to, to get inside the plastic. So. You just want to be as careful as you can. Um, just try to try to really seal your buckets as well as you can. Um, if you're using a drum, try to keep your drums sealed, um, and definitely don't don't stir it too hard because um, that definitely puts a little air in it. But you know the vacuum chamber, like like I said, um, it's kind of one of those afterthoughts. You don't think about it till you're having bubble problems. And um, Leonard over at Bait Junkies. Um, he kind of turned me on to that concept, so thank you, Leonard. Um, I've been using one for years, and uh, the same one, actually. Uh, knock on wood, fingers crossed, it hasn't broken yet. But um, I recommend a three-gallon or larger. Um, I'm using one made by Provac. Um, I don't think they have a website. I think I bought it on eBay or some motor motorcycle parts website. I don't know. It's it's been it's been probably four or five years, guys. Um, but. I'm sure you can find one uh, pretty readily available nowadays, and um, I think it will save you a lot of headache. It is, it, it is an extra step, so it adds time, but if you do it right, don't let your cup overfill. Um, you know, really pay attention, learn how to use it. You'll prevent further mistakes that cost more time. You know, I really value my time out here, um, and I don't want to waste time with scorching, uh, fighting bubbles or not degassing properly and then my cup runs over and then I wind up wasting a bunch of plastic um, that's all costing you time so um, if you're gonna use a vacuum chamber which if you're having bubble issues um, I would totally recommend it you know just figure out how to use it um, I, you know I'm sure there's other methods those are just the methods that work for me I don't I try not to fill my cup up too much and, uh, and, and if it's bubbling up too high, I try to shake it a little bit to kind of loop, to kind of get those bubbles popping. That way it'll go back down. And uh, that has worked for me for several years. And, uh, and, and I seldom ever have a problem that I can't solve with the vacuum chamber. Um, you, you have to really mess your stuff up. So that's enough rambling. Hope you liked today's episode. We're going to be doing more custom creation and popular colors coming up. And, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and shoot a vacuum chamber video because I get asked about it all the time. And uh, I've been telling guys, hey, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And um, so tonight was a good night. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time on the world's worst fishing.